We were good. We were recording. Um, well, awesome. Well, first of all, thank you everybody for being present on our call tonight. I uh, really appreciate everyone being here for part two of our GCK mall training. Um, I know it's, uh, he needs almost no, uh, no introduction, but I'm going to see if I can do my best to give, uh, give Mr. Curtis JQ uh, the proper intro that he deserves here. Uh, for those of you that may have not heard of Curtis or may not know exactly his, uh, some of his accomplishments, um, Curtis is the number two Cutco rep all, all time. Is that correct? Yes. No, currently. Number two. Number two of all time currently, I say as well. So the only person currently that sold more Cutco knives in their career uh, is John. And then Curtis is John Rulin. Uh, and no one has done it in a booth and has done it more or at a higher capacity than, uh, than Curtis in a booth environment. He's truly a master. Um, I actually was uh, during the State Fair of Texas this year. Curtis uh, was sharing a story of how he had 32 orders in one day uh, at the State Fair. Um, and was sharing with me as well that his, uh, you had your biggest day at the State Fair earlier this year. It was, I can correct me if I'm wrong on this, but I want to say it was more than $17,000. Sorry, Curtis, you're not there. Yes. It was almost 18000 Almost 18000 Okay. Um, no big deal. That's all right. Nice little $9,000 income day there. Um, yeah, Curtis is really a master of the master of the game and for, has been setting records left and right. Uh, Curtis, what are you at for the year so far? Uh, with what I've sold this week, I'm at 806000 806, $1,000. Right. So I'm over 20K for the week and it's just Friday. So the weekend ahead of you, that's, that's amazing for sure. Right. So absolute master of your, of your business. I know um, looking at a, a couple of things a few years back, one of the reasons we were super excited to have you on the call tonight was I remember uh, in our calls and talking a little bit with you, you mentioned that, um, you know, malls are definitely a little bit of a different animal. Uh, but on top of that, that, you know, the December is a pretty big month in your business and, you know, with past customer business driving the mall locations, but the, the malls that you work, you actually don't take up a, a crazy ridiculous significant portion of the shifts but your numbers are just out of this world and they tend to, to push your model on the top malls nationally. So um, I was hoping maybe you could share this tonight, just some tips and tricks that you've got on, on, you know, selling in a mall environment, anything with past customer marketing. And we're, uh, we're all ears here, my friend, and grateful to have you with us here tonight. So thank you for being here. Yeah, no problem. I'm excited to talk to you guys tonight about malls. Uh, our mall actually starts tomorrow. Um, which is very exciting, right? Uh, nine to five job we not, thought we never would have, but uh, in the month of December, we definitely have a nine to five job. So uh, it's actually super exciting because it is a different monster uh, when it comes to selling what we're doing uh, normally. Uh, I love the mall atmosphere just because it's a challenge to me. And I think that every rep that goes to malls should think of it as a challenge. Um, and the reason why is because a we're there for nine, 10 hours a day or more. Um, and the clients that are walking are not our typical clients that didn't come to a specific event or a show that's looking specifically for an, an item like Cutco. Um, you know, like most people looking for things that go into the home, right? When people go into the mall, they're either a there to hang out, be there to go eat something, or, uh, they're just walking around and what I say, kicking tires a lot. Um, and once in a while you get that shopper that's out there that's actually looking for, uh, you, you know, people and trying to buy things. And our job is to really realize that the customers that are walking around in front of us are really potentially the best clients that we can have. A majority of clients that come through the malls are not the ones that we normally see on a regular basis anyways. Uh, you know, Drew, Frank, and I, we had a conversation about it, is that maybe 1% or 2% of the people that actually uh, live in our territories uh, at special events like Stock Show or the Home Garden Show or a Holiday Food Show. And a lot of times, customers don't come multiple times to, uh, you know, the same event every single time, right? Uh, you have some customers that come to, uh, like, the Home Show, um, you know, and only go to the home show, but they don't go to the home show and they don't go to the stock show and they don't go to all those that are going on in the area. They usually pick one show and only go to that. And the thing that's great about the malls is that those people that are walking around at our malls, 
are those people that don't normally see it on a regular basis. Uh, might get the occasional people that see us at Costco, uh, you know, because our mall is located by a Costco. So therefore they go, oh, you guys are at the Costco as well. Um, with us, we really take advantage of that because it's our opportunity to work with a lot of new customers, but also work with a lot of uh, past customers who have a rep, doesn't have someone that takes care of them. Um, when I say challenge, what I do is I challenge myself to sell at least two to five grand every single day that I'm working at the malls. Um, you guys know, well, that's just impossible on Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays, right? Because it's slower than normal and we don't have the traffic that we normally see on Thursday, Friday. Saturday, Sunday. And I always tell people that's not true. It's just you have to be the one that's in the moment, stopping people, getting people engaged, and getting people ready for uh, to offer at the booth. Um, with that challenge is that a lot of people, all they do is say, hi, hello, how are you? How are you doing? Stuff like that. They sound like an annoying kiosk person, like all the other kiosks, right? Because the kiosks are trying to get someone over to their booth, right? Mm -hmm. So what we do is we try to focus in on our malls, something a little bit different, trying to engage people that have specific bags that they're carrying. So like if someone has a Nordstrom's or a Saks Fifth Avenue or a brand that we know, we usually say, hey, I have a question. You were just in that store. Uh, Do they have any exclusive sales on blah? right? And we just make up a, a kind of sale, right? And they're like, oh, I don't know if there was a sale on that. And they're like, okay, well, was there any good sales going on in there at all? I haven't shopped yet for my mom and I was thinking about doing it, right? Then that customer will stop and they'll engage with you because they're, you're actually asking them a direct question. So my main thing that I wrote down here is ask a customer a direct question that they have to respond to you. When you say, hi, how are you, hello, uh, are you familiar with Cutco, people are not going to respond back to you because it's not a direct, right? It's the same thing. If you know it's snowing outside, stop people that come in from the mall and say, hey, is it snowing out there? Is it raining out there? Uh, how's the parking lot situation look? Uh, ask them a direct question because they're going to answer that question for you, right? If you see that they ate at one of the restaurants that are there, right, ask them how busy they Questions, right? Ask them a direct question that will stop them and break the mold of them just walking as fast as they possibly can through the aisles trying to get to them. Uh, we also have the brown bag special. Uh, if we see a Louis Vuitton bag, we immediately stop that person. We will make up anything. We will dance. Them. We will uh, tell them a funny joke or we'll do something on the lines of, hey, pay attention to me, right? I'm here. Um, that's just because we know if they have a thousand dollar purse sitting in that box or in that bag, that brown bag, we know that they can afford two or three hundred dollars worth of the number one product in the world called Cutco. Um, I'm just giving you guys like an idea of just think of when you're sitting at the mall. Uh, we also use a tag team mentality, whereas if we have two people working at the mall, uh, the other person that's up on deck, they're helping the other person that's on deck uh, to get a client that comes over to the booth, right? Uh, not just standing there, not on their phone, not disengaged. Uh, they're also engaged in talking to people and trying to get people over as well. Um, this is just some ideas for you guys to get people to the booth. I know the meats and potatoes that you guys really want to know is how to sell at the booth, what to do and get people to buy bigger packages and get rid of the one piece mentality, okay? Uh, when you guys work the malls, a lot of you guys know on this call, what's the thing people do when they come up to the mall? They wanna know how much one piece is or how much just pieces are, okay? If you keep the mentality of selling pieces, you're never ever gonna get results at your mall, okay? So what you need to do is you need to talk about packages and programs with every single customer that comes up to the booth. And packages and programs start at five piece, seven piece, nine, piece okay we have an upgrade program which is the best program that you can do as a past customer and it's the smartest buy and it's the best discount you can get we also have our upgrade program not only just for upgrading your knives but upgrading your cookware your flatware we also have the cutco kitchen program we have the family program which is huge and then we also have our business right there you have five or six different avenues that you can take your customer with rather than just getting into the piece mentality of, oh yeah, you want a trimmer? Okay, yeah, it's 72, well, yeah, okay, blah, 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 this out. And then next thing you know, you only sold 70 bucks for that hour, right? You don't wanna be in that mentality. You have to change the way that you talk to people when you're at 
booth. So I'm going to give you guys some key tips on what you need to do to get that mentality away from just pieces. First thing is, if you have any customer that comes up to your booth, says, what are your discounts? Do not respond to them, oh, well, our discounts are blah, 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 blah. Do not do that at all. What you have to do is you have to make sure you specifically, oh, we have lots of discounts going on. It just depends on what you're looking for. Do you have anything in, uh, do you have any ideas or do you have anything that you're looking for? Okay, very key that you say, do you have anything in particular you're looking for? Because your customers are gonna tell you exactly what they're looking for. Now, what we do is we get sidetracked on only selling what we wanna sell that we don't ask the customer exactly what they want. Majority of the customers, when they walk up, they have many things on their mind. And except for my daughter or my son, I need a few pieces for my mom or my dad. I'm missing something, or I'm looking to add to the collection I have, or what? I need to and for me, when I ask that question, they will tell me exactly. Oh, I'm looking for a set of steak knives. Are you looking for the restaurant? Or are you looking for the table steak knives? Right? They're immediately on the path of where I need to go. Well, just so you know, we have sales on our 8, 12, 24, 32. How many do you need? Right? If you want to keep selling four table knives at a time, keep telling them we have four, six, eight, 10, 12. Don't start that way. You have to start off, right? We have 8, 10, 12, 24, 32. Then your customer's like, oh, well, how much is a set of eight? When you start off at eight, guess what? You sell more, right? If you start off at four, you sell less. It's the same thing with, oh, we have a buy three, get one free. Do you want people to only buy three knives and get one free? Then keep selling them three, get one free, right? If you want people to buy five, seven, ten, or you know, on up five, seven, nine, twelve piece specials, then you start off with we have a five, a seven, and nine piece special. How many knives do you need? Right? Then that customer will take you into that area of where they get five, seven, or nine. Right? The thing is whenever you're talking to a customer and they say, I'm looking for a gift for someone, immediately ask them what price are you looking at? Are you looking for something in the $100, 200 300 400 or do you want to spend up to 11000 right? And the customer goes, oh, I don't want that. Well, obviously not, right? But if the customer goes, you have packages that are $11,000, you're like, well, yeah, we're not just a knife company. We're a kitchen knife company. Pots, pans, flatware, cookware, everything. So you have to understand that our packages start at 11000 and then they can go all the way down to 100 Okay. If you don't want to sell a hundred dollars customer, don't tell them that we have pages that start at a hundred. Tell them that we have 200, 300, 400, 500. That way that you get your customer uh, thinking that, Hey, we're, buying high, we're not buying low end. Okay. So you, your average orders naturally go up when you start talking to your customers the right way. Okay. The other thing that I want to do is always upsell your customers. Okay. When we're at the malls, it's such a busy time and there's so many people walking by and customers like, just go, 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 go. It's your job as a representative to slow them down and to explain it to them slowly, okay? Uh, one thing that we taught at Texas State Fair, right? Fast, it, or smooth is fast and rough is slow, right? So the slower you are, the more that they're going to get, right? Because if it's just fast, quick, it goes then the thing is then you're not getting anywhere with that customer, right? If you can explain it a little bit better and make it so that the customer understands what they're getting, they're gonna buy more. The other thing I say when I say sell them, okay? Now what I say upsell, I don't mean like upsell them like a knife or two. What I say is upsell them on buying for them, everybody around them, okay? Your goal at the mall is to get them to buy as much as you possibly can from them. And I will let you know that the average statistic of malls across the nation is the average person spends $200 per store that they go into, okay? So if you think about that, the average is $200. Our average should start at $200 and go up, okay? Um, and I learned this statistic, this statistic from our mall uh, lady that lives in Denver at Terry Creek Mall, and she told us these statistics when we were there. And she found out that our mall, um, our customers are spending on average 380 per client. 
and the mom wants to know why are we doing that? How are we getting those numbers, right? And it goes back to upselling them, right? If you can sell one knife to every single customer on top of their order, if you write up, like, I, like uh, Jonathan was saying earlier, 30 orders in a day, if you wrote up an extra piece per order, three orders, that can end up being anywhere from 300 to 1,000 extra CPO that you normally wouldn't have had, okay? So I would tell you to pay attention to that and make sure that you guys are at least doing that. The other thing too is talk to every single person in their family. Do you have weddings coming up? Do you have anniversaries coming up? Any kind of other gifts that you need to buy for, right? Because you can double dip here at the show, okay? This is a key word that we use with all of our customers. You can dip at the show. What you can do is buy for Christmas now, and then you can also get your wedding and your anniversary and your birthday and your other gift all at this time. And then you can get extra discounts because you're buying it all together and you're getting a package deal. Okay. So that's dealing with past customers. Make sure you say, what are you looking for particularly? You guys got to remember, if you guys are scripted on your past customers, you're going to lose a lot of CPO because customers don't want to hear the same thing over and over and over again from every single representative, right? Oh, well, what specials do you have? Oh, we have this special, this special, this special, this special. When a customer hears that, they get sick of it because they you're a machine and you're only supposed to do those same specials. When customers come up to the booth, they want to feel special. That's why they're asking you why, what your specials are. And then you do change your specials for each customer that's there at the booth with you, okay? So there's just some key tips there. Also, make sure you have hidden sales, right? Tell the customer, oh, just so you know, we have some hidden sales and you haven't even picked those out yet. Um, I can either show them to you or, or you can just call, right? Customers don't like missing out. Like, well, what's the hidden sale? Well, we have a hidden sale on our steak knives. We have a hidden sale on our bacon stove set. We have a hidden sale on our food. We have a hidden sale on our cookware. We have a hidden sale on blah. We have a hidden sale on blah. You can make up whatever hidden sale you want, right? Stay fair. My hidden sale is the six pairing knife set, right? Do you know how many people bought the six pairing knife set just because it was a hidden sale? A lot of people, right? And people at the booth thought it was stupid that I was selling, you know, three, four hundred dollars worth of pairing knives to every customer because I said, hey, you had a hidden sale. It's not pairing knives. What's your hidden sale? Oh, well, it's this, right? And people are like, oh, well, I'll take that past deal. I want the hidden sale. So make up your own hidden sales with your past customers as well, okay? Now I'm gonna move in new customers um, and then we can go into uh, more stuff if we need to. But uh, when it comes to new customers, you have a very, very slight uh, time frame to get that customer to into Cutco. So what I would tell you to do is immediately what you want to do is cut something. Let me show this. You got to see how they add to you this right now, right? And they're like, oh, no, 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 just show. No, you have to see this. Like, if you don't see this, you're going to be missing out. And I want to show that you're the best, uh, you know, version of Cutco, right? Because the moment someone, you cut something with someone, they're immediately engaged, Okay. A lot of times at the malls, people are like, okay, well, how much is this set? And then what do the reps do? They go, oh, well, that's set if you were to buy it from Cutco. And what they do is they, that customer has information on Cutco at all, right? So your job is to first ask them, okay, well, have you ever heard of Cutco before? No? Okay, well, let me tell you a little bit about it because I don't want to sticker price it. We're high end, low end. The reason why we're in the mall is because we're the number one requested item to be brought into the mall that's not sold in stores. So the reason why we're here is we're a private company. It's based out of New York, and our customers have recommended us to come into the mall, and that's why we're here, right? Immediately, that customer, okay, well, if you are the recommended about it, why you requested into the mall, why they're the mall, they just want to cram their product down people's throats. We don't want to cram it down their throats. We want to understand, right, that we are a premier product that is only there for a, a few like weeks and that if you don't get it now, then you're going to miss out. Okay. So you got to set that tone right away from them and you go here, try this out. Once you see how our knives cut, you'll know why we're so great. 
One thing that we also say is there's a reason by William Sonoma, because if our product was down there, we would literally kill their business. Right. And then the customers chuckle. Right. And they're like, ha 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 ha. And I'm like, no, no, no joke. Right. Cutco has been by a lot of times we've been by them and we've taken their business away. Uh -oh. Someone's not on me. Um, so when you're with your customers, cut something immediately. The other thing too, is that you need to talk to your customers about this is the time of the year that we give you the best deal possible. We're cheaper than online. We're cheaper than Costco. We're cheaper than anywhere else. Okay. Now, if you guys are still selling full retail value, okay, which that's what we did at Texas State Fair, we we're selling at 1274. What we do is we talk about the package and the program and how we are giving better deals because our packages and programs are discounted uh, right now at the holiday season. Okay. And when we say packages and programs, that means that if someone's buying a homemaker 1274, what you do is you do a drop down program with them. And what you do is you give them either a free shears or you give them some gadgets on top of it. Or what you do is you price position them so that they know that they're getting the best deal. And when I say price position your customer, what you do is you go, now just so you know, the normal retail value for this set. And what you do is you do it what it is when it's all added up, individually pieced, right? And then what you do is you go, now just so you know, Cutco normally doesn't give any discounts at all. But because we're in the mall and we're a requested item, what we're doing is we're giving it to you on sale here at the show for $12.74, right? Then that customer is going to go, okay, it's on $12.74 here, right? But the thing that's nice about you buying here directly from us is that, A, we ship it out to you right away, so there's no shipping cost involved in it. Plus, what we do is we give you some free uh, items, so like, you get your free, or not free can opener, your free sharpener and your free cutting board, which is another, uh, you know, $70 value that we give you for free. Plus what we do is that we can give you a pair of shears for free, or what we can do is we can give you a couple gadgets, right? Because we want you to buy from us at the mall because A, we're the best deals that are going on, but at the same time, you'll have a local representative that'll take care of you and there's no middleman that's working here. You're buying directly from us, right? Uh, we have all the products on hand. If you guys don't have homemakers on hand, that's totally fine. Uh, ship them the block or ship them everything as soon as possible. Uh, what I would always recommend you guys, if you sell a homemaker or a signature or something at the mall, roll it immediately after you sell it. And what I do is I pay for the two-day shipping of $15 or $25. And I want that thing out there so fast that they didn't even know what hit them, right? Uh, the other thing too is that if you have your customer and they're kind of like, uh, I don't know about the 1273, 1274 price. Uh, do you know how easy it is just to drop an extra $50 off of it, right? You know what? I know you really want it, so let me give it to you for 1220, right? Uh, let me give it to you for uh, 1189, right? If you need to drop it uh, down to 1180. You guys got to remember that when we're working at the malls, if you do your price, uh, your price positioning very well, it's very easy for you to get higher CPL and you don't have to drop your prices so fast, right? Because the thing is that you can drop it a little at a time and that customer is going to stay there at the booth until they get the price range that they're looking for, right? Uh, now, I don't recommend this. Uh, people across the nation think that I do this all the time, which I don't. Uh, I think that I sell homemakers for like 900 bucks. If I sold homemakers at $900, I wouldn't be sitting at $800,000 for the year. Um, obviously, I sell homemakers at $1,274. I sell them for $1,189. I sell them for $1,231. Um, you know, I, I sell them because Cutco is a valuable product and you don't need to drop the price. But I will tell you that if you're at the mall and you really want that CPO and really need to close that deal, you can take that customer from $1,274 all the way down to 1031 if you really needed to, right? Which is the traded value with one table knife, okay? Um, do I tell you to do that? Absolutely not. Do not do that. But if you have to, guess what? There's reps all across the nation that are called baby reps or new reps. They're selling them on demos just like that for the trade-in value, okay? Yeah, it's 600 CPO, but guess what? If a customer to walk, I would get that 600 CPO rather than seeing that customer walk, okay? But I'm telling you, if you guys do your price positioning very well, you're never, ever going to have to drop that set below 1100 okay? And if you are dropping that set below 1100 then that means you don't have product conviction and you're not, you're not really thinking about the customer and what they're getting and the value of Cutco, okay? 
Now, one thing that I wanted to talk to about other than price positioning is that what you need to do is that if you want to sell Cutco kitchens and you want to sell, uh, you know, flatware and cookware to your customers that are buying sets at the show, you have to sell them the set of knives first and get the yes on the set of knives before you start introducing them all the other stuff that they could buy. Okay. I've seen this so many times where representatives across the nation at the malls and at shows will start showing the Cutco kitchen and start selling that customer more stuff because the customer's like, Oh, I like the knives. Well, tell me about the pans. Tell me about the flatware, right? Sell them the knives first, get the order for that set of knives and then go into the Cutco kitchen close. Okay. That's why I said upsell them. If you're, if you're doing that immediately, you're giving them way too many options. And then that customer is just like, uh, you know, I, I really like it, but I can't spend $6,000 right now at the show. Well, obviously not, but they could have spent $1,100 or $1,200 on a set of Cutco, right? Close the set first and then start upgrading people, okay? Also, when you have new customers, okay, you have to reassure that customer two or three times at the booth. When I say reassure, you have to tell them why they're buying it, what's going on with Cutco, and why Cutco is so great, okay? And reassuring at the mall is a little bit different than normal, because usually at a home show, we can reassure them by going, now just so you know, you're buying American made, which we would tell you to support our country, not a foreign one. Uh, the other thing that's nice is you're buying once, you're never buying again. And three, when it comes to service, that's our job. We really want to make sure that when you buy something from us, you get the full service. It's, it's our customer service is unbelievable, right? That's the normal reassurance, right? But at the malls, your reassurance has to be a little bit different. Now, like I said earlier, we're the number one requested item to be brought into the mall at this time of the year. The other thing that's nice about it is that you are buying American made, which we tell you support our country, not a foreign one. There is not one knife company in this mall that will sell you the number one product in the world, which is us, that's made in America and guaranteed. Most of the stuff that you see in these stores are foreign made and they do not last but maybe three months to six months. The other thing that you gotta remember is that you're buying it from us directly, okay? We are the local representatives that have been brought into the mall and we are the ones that take care of all the customers out into the field. So just so you know, I have 20,000 customers that live here in the Denver metro area. I will be your rep that will be taking care of you. Then when it comes to customer service, I'm your guy. If they dole or break or ruin, I'm the guy that specifically comes out to your house and sharpens them for free. Customer service to me is a huge deal and that's why I have 20,000 customers, right? So when you reassure, it's a little bit different at the mall than it is at a normal event because at events, they're like, okay, well, they're here every year. Obviously, uh, these are the top people, right? At the malls, they think you're a fly-by-night company because you're sitting at a kiosk, right? And most of the garbage that's sold at kiosks, you see them one year and you never see them again, right? We want to picture that we're here every year and that we are a staple that's here. One thing that we use in our reassurance clothes that we say, we're kind of like C's candy. I don't know if you guys have C's candy in Texas, uh, but C's candy only comes out at the holiday season and is only in the malls at that time of the year. That and Instrum's chocolates and certain things. And what we do is we say, now just so you know, we're just like C's candy and Instrum's. We are only here at Christmas time. And we've been in the same mall for six years, seven years, eight years, however many years, and that we will be here every year. So if you have any questions or you break anything or something bad happens, you can always bring your knives in here to the, us at the mall and we will take care of it for you as well. We're a seasonal thing, right? Get that customer excited about that as well. Uh, the other thing is that you guys are gonna have consignment or what they call promotional products that are there that you can sell on hand, okay? One thing that I would encourage you guys to do is do not use that as a about what inventory is below do not carry what don't care about anything that's down below okay your job as a salesperson is to sell them everything that you can possible okay if you can't sell them every single item right there guess what you can ship it okay and if that customer doesn't want it shipped guess what give them all the product that's there and then what you can do is ship them the other stuff later or uh, ship that through the factory and say hey we sold out of that we'll have it out to you right away Here's the rest of your product. Write it up as two orders, charge them two different ways, and then go that way. 
I know that this is something that Jonathan has already talked to you about, but the thing is that I don't want you guys using it as a crutch and I teach my team, do not use your promotional product as a crutch at all, okay? You act like it's not even there and then what you do is you sell the product and you go, hey, and just so you know, we actually have it here. So you can take it home with you if you know all the products there. If it's not there, then guess what? Your customer doesn't know that you have the product there, so they're expecting that you're gonna ship it to them anyways, right? Now, if your customer specifically says, do you have this here? Uh, you say, yeah, we have inventory, but not everything is in inventory. And what we can do is if we're out of that inventory, we'll ship it out to you ex expedited today or next day. Now, obviously your malls have already started, so you guys can, uh, Cutco is shipping really quickly right now, if you guys haven't noticed. Uh, people are getting it in three to five days, okay? Uh, that's just because they're going through 8,000 packages a day at Cutco right now. So they're loading up trucks and getting it out of the warehouse as fast as they possibly can. So if you have someone that buys something at the mall, they're gonna have it the next week or in, uh, with way before Christmas. So remember that when you're selling your promotional items as well, and don't be afraid of it, okay? Um, I, I just encourage you guys as a team, uh, really help each other out, you know, celebrate every single victory that's going on at your malls. If someone writes up an order uh, and you're not doing so hot, you still high five that person, you still feel great about them. Do not compete with the people that you're with at the malls. Uh, if you wanna have a terrible season, compete with the person that you're working with. Uh, I say that is because the more you compete with that person at the mall, uh, the less you're gonna sell because that person's just gonna keep kicking your butt, okay? Your job is to stay focused and sell as much as you possibly can. And what you need to do is you need to have victories for everything you sell. Whether you sell a trimmer or you sell a homemaker, you should be high-fiving each other and go, yes, I got a sale. Okay? Because you gotta remember that your army is the new customers that you're putting on your database. And every year that you add new customers onto that database, your business is gonna get better and better and better and better and better. Okay, people ask me this all the time. Curtis, how do you sell so much more than everybody else? It's easy. I have 20,000 customers that I can send an email, a letter, or something to, and those people are gonna buy Cutco from me when I need it, okay? And if you only have 1,000 or 100 or 200 people, your goal at the mall is to write up as many orders as you possibly can at the mall. And that is the thing that I think of when I go into the mall is, how many people can I sell to today at the mall that are going to eventually buy thousands of dollars from me you know, as the years go on? And that should be your challenge, that should be your thought process when you're going into the mall, right? And getting people excited about buying Cutco from you uh, and getting people excited about getting sharp instruments in their kitchen, right? And that they're gonna have one product and never have to buy knives ever again. Cool. So uh, that's majority of what I had planned. Uh, I know I rambled there for a little bit and it was like a lot. Um, but the thing is that uh, if you are a top representative that's in on the team that's listening to this, uh, I would encourage you uh, to work with as many customers as you can at the booth. And if it's not your turn or whatever, uh, email your customers, take care of your phone orders, do whatever you can uh, to be very productive at your malls. Uh, profitability is the best you can think about uh, and how can you be profitable and that's by selling and writing up as many orders as you can okay Jonathan you have any questions for me or anyone on the team uh, Curtis that was absolutely fire I put in our team group me here a second ago that uh, I coach with you one-on-one -on -one, and I think I had my mind blown about 10 different times on uh, on your call so far so um, thank you so much for, for being here with us. If we've got time for a couple more questions just from the team, maybe do a little bit of a, of open forum. I won't, uh, I won't hog the, the opportunity since a lot of these people don't have the same exposure to you that I do. Um, but yeah, team, at this point, we got time for a couple questions. I mean, what, uh, what's coming up for you guys? What are some takeaways? One thing that I would uh, tell you guys to do is that uh, um, when you guys are selling at the booth, uh, what I would do is I would uh, let other people know. Like if if you're if you have a customer at the booth and you have another rep that's at the booth, 
um, let that other customer know that that person's buying something, right? So if someone's just chatting and uh, is looking at something at the booth or at the kiosk, and they're like, oh, well, I'm looking at a paring knife and blah, 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 blah. And the other lady on the other side is buying Cutco or there's someone at the booth that's got it, buying Cutco, immediately tell that customer, oh yeah, this lady, she has Cutco. She's even buying more. She loves it so much that she came up to the booth to get even more knives, right? Then what it does is it creates that buying atmosphere that we talk about. Uh, if you want more people buying from you, uh, what you have to do is you have to point out the obvious. Oh yeah, this lady, she's buying a whole lot. Uh, you know, you should get in on these sales. They're amazing, right? Even if you're walking by to get consignment that's out of the bottom of the bin, just mention it go, oh, the lady over there, she's super excited getting all these discounts over here. Uh, I hope you're getting some too because you're going to absolutely love the sales that are going on here at the booth, right? It's just a quick little, hey, she's buying, you buying. why aren't you buying? You know what I mean? Hey, Curtis, hey, Curtis this is Ricky Garza. How are you doing? Can you hear me? Hey, I'm doing good. How are you doing? I'm phenomenal. Yes, I can, Mr. Garza. Awesome. So, uh, first of all, you're a, you're a super hot commodity in Cutco, as you know. So, thank you so much. Uh, for the bottom of all of our hearts, uh, this is so amazing. You, you definitely don't have to do this. So, appreciate that. And two questions for you. One, what's the advantage to telling them that, uh, and I've heard it in your pitch before, that you tell them, hey, we're going to be here every single year for years to come. So if you have any questions, you can always come to us versus just telling them, hey, I'm, I'm the local rep or I'm, I'm your guy. I'm going to take care of you. You can call me whenever. Is it just to limit the amount of time that way because you have so many customers? Is that why you tell them only once a year that you can help them? Or, or maybe is, am I interpreting that wrong? And then my second question is, what are you constantly thinking about all the time at the booth, what are you thinking about when you want to generate a CPO? What's the CPO? What's the constant conversation you have with yourself all the time? And what are the quality questions you do to prime your brain before you go into sales environment? I, I know that was a bunch, so I can re-ask uh, the, the sub subsequent questions if you want. But the first one, why is the... The first, the first one, the reason why I tell customers uh, great questions. Uh, the first question uh, that you asked is, why do I tell customers that we're here year after year after year? You have to remember that we are building a business of people that are uh, one narrow-minded, okay? That's the best way I can put it, is that if I have a customer who comes to stock show every single year, they only expect to see me at stock show every single year. And that I'm, I'm totally fine with that. Uh, the reason why I say that in my script is because I know that they're at the mall more than likely they are a mall shopper, okay? And that the mar my marketing, so I'm very good at marketing and I'm very good at taking care of customers and I've noticed that trends happen. So the one trend that I noticed with my customers is that uh, when they buy in one place, let's say the home and garden or let's, because we're doing the malls, they buy at the malls, that customer does not have any com communication with me at all until it comes to mall season. It's very interesting. Um, and when I do my marketing, I send marketing out to people all year long. And those people that were at the mall, they don't respond back to my marketing until they get an email or something that typically says, hey, I'm at the mall, come to the mall. I know you were here last year, uh, come by, right? So that's why I have it in my approach that, hey, we're gonna be here year after year. If you have any questions or need anything, then you can bring it to me. The reason why I do that is because then it reassures that customer that where they normally shop, where they normally or where they normally see me as their Cutco rep, they're going to see every year. So in their mind, they're thinking, okay, well, if he's going to be here, this is perfect. What I can do is I can buy this now and then next year I can come back and I can get it. And then anytime that they want to buy Cutco, they know that I'm going to be in that same spot every single year. So there's no excuse that they couldn't have found me. Does that make sense? So that's oh why God. I do that. It's just real. I'm here. I'm going to be that, here. I'm not going exciting. anywhere. Right? I've been here 15 years. My ass has been at this mall for seven years. You can find me here every single year. Right? So that's why I do it. Next thing that you asked is mentality. Okay? I love that you asked the mentality question. What am I thinking when I'm at the 
what what's going through my mind what's my mind going one my mind's always saying how can you improve how can you get better okay why are you so good at what you do and you're doing here looking like a, a, an idiot right going hi how are you how you got a brown bag blah 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 right um what it is is that it's, like I said, it's a challenge. So in my mind, I'm sitting here like, how can I challenge myself to become better at what I'm doing, right? And in this moment, okay, how am I going to be the best that I can be in this moment when this moment not, might, might not be the best place for me to be the best, right? So that, that's where you're using your mind and you start getting your different ideas and how you start doing things differently in your business, right? A lot of times when I'm working at different events, especially like the mall, is where I learn different things that work for that target market or for other target markets that help me in the long run in the business realize that, hey, remember that one year all this, I was saying this one thing and everybody kept buying? Well, maybe that one thing is the one thing that could be helping me right now at the stock show. Right. And then what it is that my mind is always thinking about what was working when I was at the best, what was working when I was in this moment, what was going on at this. So the whole time that I'm sitting there, I'm thinking about what happened last time, what was in that moment, how can I make that better? The other thing that when I'm standing there at the booth is I'm sitting there going, CPO has to be coming in and I'm expensive. Okay. And I charge a lot of money every hour that I'm in someone's house every time that I'm at a home show. What makes the mall different than anywhere else that I'm at? And it's probably because A, I'm not engaging people, B, I'm not making it so that people understand that I'm open for business, and C, I don't have the mentality of what these people are thinking, okay? One thing that uh, Jonathan will know, because he works with me all year long, that I think like a customer, I act like a customer, and I, build my relationships as a customer. Okay. And the thing is that when I'm standing there at the booth, if people are not walking up to my booth, I go, okay, why are people not buying from me? What am I doing as a customer from a customer standpoint? Why as a customer not me and buying from me? Is there something at the booth that doesn't look right? Is there an attitude that needs to be adjusted? Is there some kind of giveaway? Is there some kind of signage? What's going on? Because as a customer, I should be buying Cutco all the time because it's the best product in the world. doesn't matter who the rep is. It's why are they not coming to me because I'm the one that they should be buying from. So think about that when you're at the booth. Okay? What are my customers thinking? What are these customers that are walking by thinking about my product, right? And it could be a simple thing is that they're, they're not even seeing you, right? Because they have blinders on, right? And if that's, the thing when you're standing there you'll have an aha moment and go we've got to adjust the sign or we need to stop people or we need to stand a certain way or we need to do something to engage the customer because that customer needs to be engaged with someone to have a, a, a conversation with or uh, be engaged into my product so hopefully this was your question i know it was like a long-winded one but the thing is that think like a customer spend money like a customer and sell like a customer wants you to be sold. Cool. Uh, I'm, I'm speechless, man. Uh, that was so, that was so fire. And I have the biggest 1761 right now. I hope you got that. Very cool. Uh, yeah. Hopefully it's, Seven inches. Mental, <laughs> mental, know, mental. Seventeen sixty one. Terrible. Hey, Curtis, can you hear me? Okay. Perfect. Yes, I can. Who hey, is this? Can you walk me through? This is Johnny Vaticola. Um, can you walk me through your upserving process? Okay. Nice. How are you, John? Uh, the I'm upsell. Well. Is that what you said? Yeah. Mm -hmm. that What's your, what's your favorite packages? Okay. What, what, did what you, makes you, you want me to walk you, you go from, yeah. Walk me through so, what you so choose to upsurge. My favorite package. Okay. So we'll start off small and then we'll go up from there. Okay. Uh, when it comes to a past customer, first upserves that I like to upserve them, obviously is a, a chest of flatty. 
okay. Uh, I think that that's something that every single customer should have. Uh, and a lot of customers, they hate mix match stuff, okay. Um, and that's why they buy Cutco because it's all uniform and it looks the same. You ever know why they're like, oh, it looks like the stuff that I bought 15 years ago, right? Mentality customers, that's the way they think. So you have to, you have, to have that mentality as well. Uh, I love observing customers' flatware because it's something that they don't know about, but they should know about it, okay? Uh, and the other thing is past customers save a lot of money. Okay. Uh, when they think of Cutco, they already know it's expensive and they know it's the best. So what I would tell you to do is that say, Hey, I know you're a past customer. We have some amazing discounts, but if you really want the best discounts, you need to look at these items. Okay. And then they're going to go, okay, well, what are those items? And then what you do is you say, well, one, the flatware is the best deal that you could buy at the booth period. The second thing that you need to do is you need to upgrade. I don't know if you ever thought about upgrading. But we have a great program. If you buy a few pieces and add on to the collection that you have, we have a way where we can get you a new block and we can get you all the new pieces so that your old ones and your new ones all one new block. Okay, it's the smartest buy that Cutco has, and it's the best thing that a customer that owns Cutco should do because this discount exclusive to you because you're a past customer, right? Why is it exclusive? Because a new customer doesn't have knives yet, so they can't do the upgrade program, right? But customers know that, right? So you got to think like a customer. If I'm thinking like a customer, that's what I want to hear. Um, some other upserves that I would do, if someone's buying like three, knives, what you do is you go, hey, I wouldn't be doing my job if I didn't tell you this, but if you pick out one more item, you literally are going to get rock bottom price on it. And they're like, what? And then you're like, yeah, just pick out one item and I'll show you the discount, right? And the reason why is because if a customer picks out one more item, we count or we can bonus a different item that's more expensive for free and you get extra CPL, right? So the best thing is like when the customer goes, okay, well, how much are the shears? Well, everyone knows, especially a past customer knows they're 120 bucks, okay? 112 bucks, right? The moment you drop to them, yeah, you buy those shears, they're on sale for $78, what they're 78 they're like yeah and then what do they do they immediately add it on right so one thing that i would tell you when you're upselling make sure that you show the discount of what that product would be so let's give you an idea because i think this is something that uh can be confusing let's say the customer is buying a petite carver which is 100 they're buying a cheese knife right which is 89 and then let's say they're buying a pairing knife which is 65 if you add that up, that tells you a price. Now, if you tell them, right, if you pick out one more item, I'll give you the best deal possible, right? Then what they do is they pick out like the pair of shears. Well, you charge them the 112, but what you do is you give away the pairing knife as a free gift, right? Bonus it. So then you take that $65 off of the 112 which gives you the total, right? And you go, well, those shears are normally 112, but because you're buying it with these three items, I can give it to you for blah price. And then that customer's like, really? And then you're like, yeah, trust me, the more you buy, the bigger the discount gets. Now that one's discounted really well, but if you wanna see even better deals, wait until you're seeing our seven piece, nine piece and 12 piece specials. And then your customer's attitude is going to change to, uh, Johnny, they're going to go, well, what's the nine piece special? You pick out nine pieces and literally we rock bottom price it, right? And it, it's crazy how many people just say, well, let me pick out nine pieces and you tell me the price. It's so, it's so freaking easy to upgrade people or upsell people because that's all you have to do, right? Um, some other packages that I love doing with customers is the family program, Okay. This is something that I teach all of my reps that mentor with me, okay? When people come up to the booth, we are a company. We are a knife company. So the thing that's great about a knife company is if someone comes up looking for knives, they're not looking for what? Flatware, cookware, and all the other stuff. So the thing is that a lot of representatives across the nation are on this bandwagon of trying to sell cookware. Well, guess what? The customer doesn't want cookware and flatware. They want knives. That's why they came to the booth because it's a knife booth. 
So the thing that I always tell people is before you start software and flatware to your customers, especially your new customers, okay, is that you tell them about the family program. If you want the family program to be very effective, then you throw that in when you're talking to a customer and upsell them that first. Because who doesn't want to buy for their family members knives when they're at a knife booth, okay? So that's why I always say, Johnny, just make sure that when you're doing your upsells, talk about the family program immediately with your past customers and your new customers. Because I have one line that I use, okay? And I sell sets like crazy. The reason why I'm at 20,000 for the week is because I sold probably like 10, $15,000 on the family program, okay? And it comes from one line. A new customer is buying a signature set from me and I go, now just so you know, we also have the family program and it's also known as our multi-set program. And that program is designed for you as a new customer to buy the set of your dreams. But if you want to give the gift to your children, like a smaller, maybe like our starter set or maybe even the basic set, or you can even give them the same set that you're buying. But if you buy multiple sets, you get bigger discounts on all of them right? That's why the price positioning is such a great thing. And then what they do is they go, oh, really? And then all of a sudden that wife, the, her head is thinking, she's like, oh shit, we can get the gifts done, right? My daughter needs one. I need one, right? And the next thing you know, they go, okay, well, I'll take this set for myself. They always pick the big set for themselves, obviously, right? Because they're not going to buy the same set for everyone else. But then they buy two galley sets on top of their signature set. Well, your upsell just worked perfectly because guess what? People want discount. And what we do is if we say we have a multi-set discount and it's called our family program, and it would be smart for you to do that as a first time buyer, because literally when you get these at home and love them, everybody in your family is going to be talking about them. And as you're cutting yourself at Christmas time, everybody's like, well, where did you get those? Where did you get that? And then you're going to realize that, guess what? Cutco's not in the mall anymore because we're only there for the holiday. Right, so you might as well just get the sets now, get it out of the way, and get a discount on everything. Does that help you out, John? Yeah, I'm gonna have to hear that uh, that that recording because uh, that was a lot. <laughs> um, How's it probably? Okay. So, <laughs> uh, I, I know, right? guys, There's one one thing with me. Yep. No, it ahead. just comes out. It's like vomit. I'm sorry. <laughs> I said, I said, it's like vomit. It just comes out. And a lot of people are like, oh my gosh, he goes a mile a minute. That's just because I'm passionate about selling Cutco. And I love my job. And the thing is that anytime I get to speak to uh, reps, I want them to know straight from me exactly what I'm doing. Okay. I don't beat around the bush. I let you know exactly what's going on in my business uh, because I think that even if you're a new rep and you're or a top rep, we all deserve the right to sell as much taco as we can because uh, there's an abundance in front of us and it doesn't matter where you live. Everybody deserves as taco as they possibly can. Hey Curtis, one last question for you. Yeah. What do I have to do to yep. get uh, to work uh, and, and mentor under you? <laughs> um, a lot. <laughs> um, I, I would let you know uh, uh, I'm always open for mentees. Uh, it's just with me and the way that I work with my mentees is that um, you would be on a list. And then uh, what, what I would tell you to do is that you need to like constantly harass me um, because most of the time what I do is I take the ones that have been harassing me for a while and then I put them on the thing. Um, the other thing too is that I always look at where you are in your business, where you want to go in your business and um, what you've already done in your business. Uh, not saying that you're not qualified saying that you could ever uh, mentor with me because I take on a lot of people. Uh, Roger Rodriguez, I took him in when he was at 50,000 in sales. And then the next year he moved with me 150,000, right? So it's, it's not like I don't take in uh, anyone. It's just, I would tell you bug the hell out of me uh, or uh, what I do is just sit down with me and tell me exactly why or what you're looking out of my mentoring with you and then I can best help you out that way. Uh, and I will let you know, cause I'm honest, I have a lot of people on the list 
So, um, you know, when Jonathan came to me, uh, he was on the list and then I said, okay, let's do this. Right. So, uh, don't be shy. Don't think that I will never help you. Uh, you know, and I'm always a phone call away. Uh, even if I can't mentor you all year long, uh, you guys can always get my number from Jonathan. You guys can always text me or call me. And the thing is that, uh, I'm always willing to help reps out. Uh, I was in your shoes, uh, 10, 15 years ago. I know how it feels as a new rep coming up in the business. Um, you know, that's why you guys see my videos that I do uh, with back you guys to be the best. Uh, and you know, if you don't see me at your and banquet, look for me at net meeting or look for me somewhere and just have a conversation with me. That tell you to do at first. Uh, and then we can start a relationship and go that way. Cool. Fantastic. Awesome. Curtis, thank you uh, so much for joining us tonight. I appreciate it. Johnny, one, uh, one other comment. I've known Curtis for a little while now. I think uh, he's very receptive to, uh, to gifts and especially if we're out and grabbing a drink or something like that, a great way to get his ear is to uh, see if you'd like a beverage you know, and see where we can go from there. So anyway, um, Curtis, thank you so much. That was absolutely, uh, that was absolutely fire, man. I'm going to say I absolutely appreciate it. We're, uh, we're going to go ahead and get the recording side wrapped up here and we'll get that uh, link sent out to you. Um, so that way we can have this for future calls too. And just, uh, you can have a resource as well, but thank you so much for giving back to our team. Yeah, no problem. You absolutely. Guys, and, uh, good luck to you. Because you, guys, you guys broke our record last year. Uh, and, we're coming after you. That'll be fun, man. We're at uh, we're at about 18 grand so far for them all already. So get a little bit of a head start. So we'll see what happens. Oh. For you, because we haven't even started. <laughs> <laughs> Very good, I'll my friend. See you guys later, all right? Thank you again. Okay. Thank, thank you, right. guys. Bye-bye.